I think what's really exciting about the work that we do in, in Hyper Studio is to explore the possibility, the potential of digital media for learning and research in uh, the humanities and social sciences. Digital humanities is not only an emergent, it's an exploding field. And in terms of the future trajectory of, of digital humanities, there's clearly an aspect of working with very large data sets. This is something that's very popular right now, and we need to understand what are the right tools to do that. The Hyper Studio answers a really profound question. We've digitized amazing amounts of newspapers, books, films, video, sound. Now what? What do we do with this digitized material? And the Hyper Studio is all about uh, both developing tools and with those tools developing new ways to think about those data sets. Basically, they're allowing us to push the questions that have driven the humanities since, you know, for, for the last thousand plus years. They're allowing us to take those questions and push them in whole new directions. So the Hyper Studio has developed a number of tools especially tools that allow very interesting data visualizations. One is, for example, a, a timeline. And timelines have been used uh, for centuries, and they are very interesting timelines. And when you look around on the web, what's available, they are very standard timelines. You know, it's always the linear timeline. But we see those tools as uh, enabling tools to represent the data and to constantly modify the way you can visualize and represent the data. One project that we're working on uh, is the U.S.-Iran project. It's a um, diplomatic history project about the missed opportunities between the two countries. And there are perspectives. For example, there are timelines and dates that are relevant for the Iranian side but there are dates that are relevant for this process from the U.S. side. And if you can juxtapose these, you can immediately detect, for example, where are the gaps, because dates that are important for the Iranians might not be important for the American side. So around these moments in a data set, you can discover moments that are relevant for further research. For example, we have a project with the history department here at MIT, Jeff Ravel, who is a theater historian. And this is a project that we're doing in collaboration with the Comédie Française in, in Paris. By representing the performance dates along a visual uh, line here, one can immediately detect two gaps in the performance uh, dates. So one immediately asks the question, what happened here? Why is there such a large gap? Well, it turns out by pulling in other kinds of information, it was actually the death of the French king, Louis XV. Visualizing that in really interesting ways over time allows the scholars, the students, to gain very interesting new insights. In the humanities, we have to be the ones who influence the technical development because we want the tools that are helpful for us. We want specific humanities tools that work in a digital environment so that we can actually do the research and the teaching and the learning that we want to do and that are necessary for the humanities.